I'm about to challenge you to do more of five things in your yard this season. Now, I know what you're thinking. More? Hold on. Don't throw rocks at me just yet. For every tip I challenge you to do more of, I'll challenge you to do less of another. So are you in? or out. You've heard this first one enough. You're probably sick and tired of hearing it by now, but are you really doing it more? Or is it the same old song and dance every season? I'm going to mow more this year. Yep, this is the year I'm going to mow at least twice a week. Screw that. Three times a week. This is my season. <laughs> Sound familiar? Talk's cheap, you know. You actually have to do it. You might not like it, but I'm telling you, the one thing that will transform your lawn in a single season is mowing. You have to mow more. Now, unless, of course, you plan on using a plant growth regulator. But if you're usually mowing just once a week, you gotta bump that up. Those are rookie numbers. How many times a week? Two times minimum. Three if you're feeling it. Strangely, people seem to always water more and mow less. Flip that. Water less this season. Dumping a lot of water all over your lawn won't fix your problems. More likely, it's causing some of them. Sure, we want to do our best to get around an inch of water a week, but have you ever just tried paying attention to the grass and waiting on it to tell you when it's thirsty? Or are you too worried about staying on a schedule and run the sprinklers even if you don't need to? There's nothing worse than watching someone's irrigation run right after a good rainfall or with it in the forecast. Not only will you save on your water bill, but you'll also be doing the grassroots a favor. People often spritz their lawn with a watering every day or every other day. Light, frequent watering is not the way to go. It promotes shallow roots for the grass. You want to shoot for deep and infrequent watering. Letting the grass dry out and forcing the roots to dig down deeper for water isn't a bad thing. There's an easy fix for those areas that seem to crisp up faster than the others. You don't have to water the whole lawn. Just hit those spots with a little hand watering during the hottest part of the day. A lot like you'll see a golf course grounds crew do to the greens during the summer. It's called syringing. If you're not doing more of this next thing, what are you doing with your yard time? This gives me probably more satisfaction than anything else in lawn care. Instead of sitting around on the couch and stressing about those weeds that are driving you nuts, get up, go outside, grab a bucket, and start picking. Handpicking weeds is not only therapeutic, but it's also a surefire way to rid a weed from your lawn instantly. It's safer too, and you don't have to wait on the weeds to die. If you want to see more success, try timing your picking session right after rain. A softer ground will make it easier to get the roots out. Since I water my lawn with sprinklers and hoses, I'll use that time while the soil is wet to pick weeds. And dang, do I feel accomplished when I'm done. You should begin to notice that a lot of these things dance together. If you mow more and pick more weeds, you have less of them. If you have less weeds, you can use less post-emergent herbicides. You don't have to turn to weed killers. Sure, spot treatments are necessary sometimes, but a full broadcast lawn treatment shouldn't always be your solution. I get it though. More often than not, we look for the easy way out. If I just do this, that problem will be solved. If I apply that product, it will prevent this issue from happening. Here's a thought. Don't you think that if we just open our eyes more, we might not be so concerned with things that don't even exist? The late, great New York Yankee Yogi Berra once famously said, you can observe a lot just by watching. Hmm, that's kind of a weird quote, isn't it? Observe and watching pretty much mean the same thing, right? Well, not really if you think about it. Here's the point I think he was trying to make as it relates to lawn care. Instead of acting out of pressure or fear this year, just watch what is happening in your yard more and act as needed. It's really simple to get drowned in the flood of information and take our eyes off what's really going on. When we're paying more attention, we observe realities and can tackle the necessary things and not be bothered by those that don't apply to us. Oddly enough, if we observe more, we can actually do less. Less fertilizing, 
less disease control, and less insect control. I'm not saying never do these things. I'm just saying that we should first do more of the one thing that never lets us down, the eye test. If there's nothing wrong with the grass and it looks the way you want it to, what's the point? Just to prevent? I'm sorry, but I don't work that way. I realize that some of you do, so you do you. That's okay too. I, on the other hand, prefer this approach. If the lawn looks like it needs to be fed, fertilize it. If you see a fungus or insect issue, deal with it. Disease can oftentimes take care of itself if you just get rid of the environmental conditions causing it. But getting rid of insects and other creepy crawlers isn't always a good idea because some of them help to naturally aerate the soil and reduce thatch. It's always a good idea to consider the negative side before doing that one thing you think is positive. Kind of like when it comes to this next practice you should be doing more of this season, mulching. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I would bet that at some point you've bagged your clippings while mowing because you heard about all the bad things that could happen if you don't, like increased weeds, disease, and thatch. Not all that's true. I did a video about this a couple years ago. I talked about an article from the University of Arkansas Extension Office that discusses all the misconceptions surrounding clippings when it comes to mowing. I'll link it below. I promise you this, if you watch that video, you'll be mulching more and bagging less. In my humble opinion, the benefits to mulching your grass clippings back into the lawn far exceed the downside swirling around online. I mean, it's hard to argue with supplying more nitrogen and contributing to the formation of organic matter that encourages earthworms, which help to aerate the soil and reduce thatch accumulation. Did I mention the amount of time and work saved? That alone right there is enough to convince me. But I'm not an idiot. Stop, I know what you're thinking. I realize that there's likely nothing I can say to make you change your mind about any of this. And if that's the case about everything so far, I hope I'll at least be able to move the needle a little bit on this last one. This is gonna sound backwards. But if you ever want your lawn to reach its highest potential, then you need to do more gardening and less lawn work. Landscaping and flower beds are key to making your grass pop. The lawn doesn't always have to be perfect to look good if it's not the only star of the show. And you can take that to the bank. So are you still in or out? If you're up for the challenge, let me know in the comments below. Appreciate you watching. Hope to see you again next time.